Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to take a look at the Recursive Tables API script for Roll20. This API allows you to make inline die rolls right from table entries, to format the output of the tables using templates, and even lets you create table entries that roll on other tables. Note that because we're using the API, a pro account is required in order to do this. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Tables are a key element in any tabletop role-playing game. You've got tables for treasure, tables for random magic items, tables for what happens when your players go mad. And many times within those tables, you'll see statements like, the desk drawer contains 3d6 silver pieces, or roll twice on the minor artifacts table to see what's contained in this treasure chest. Well, the Recursive Tables API script is going to allow you to handle those sorts of entries quickly and seamlessly and present them in a visually appealing format. Let's take a look. So the first thing you're going to need to do is install the script. And the Recursive Table script is part of the Roll20 script library, so you can just go in there, grab the script, and install it. If you're not familiar with how to do that, I'll pop a card in the top right that shows how to do it. Now, after you get the script installed, you're going to need some tables. And I've already built a table here called Treasure. Let's just open it up, have a look at it. You can see here I've got 40, 10 coins, paintings, ingots, rubies. Okay, cool. You could have as many items in the table as you want. But what I want to do is make a roll on this table that would then generate the appropriate amount of treasure. So if we did that with the normal syntax, the normal rollable table syntax, it would look like this. We do slash R and then... 1t and then an open square bracket and the name of the table treasure and you can see we get back this format which is kind of blocky and it doesn't actually do the inline roll we just get the the 2d4 rubies i can make this a little bit tighter if i change this to be just an inline roll that is wrap it inside square brackets now it comes up a little tighter, but we still get this tooltip. It's highlighted in yellow, and it didn't actually do the roll. I want this to actually roll 2d4 and give me 6 rubies, or, or whatever it happens to be. So the way to do that is I'm going to go back to my inline roll syntax here, and I'm going to add in exclamation point RT space. And there we go. Now you see we rolled 15 gold coins. If I do it again... It's six gold ingots and so on. So that is reading the values from the table. It's extracting the die roll that we made, rolling the dice, and then rendering the output for us in a format that we want. And that's really great. So now let's build on this a little bit. Let's have our table call another table. And you may do this, especially in games like D&D, where you have a treasure table, and like the very last item in the treasure table is roll on this other table twice, or something like that. So what I've done is created another treasure table here called Treasure 2, and you'll notice that in the table items, it's just that syntax to roll on another table, the 1T magic items all enclosed in square brackets. So now what we can do is use our same syntax, the exclamation point RT, open double bracket, I'm gonna roll on, I'm gonna say 1T open bracket treasure two. And you can see now it rolled on my magic item table because that was where I have Heward's handy spice pouch. So we called into treasure two, treasure two called into magic items. And this makes for a very flexible approach now because we can just have as many tables as we need. They can call each other as we need to. And then you can generate whatever type of treasure or effect or what have you that you're looking for. Up to this point, we've really just been rolling once on a particular table. But there are times, of course, when you will want to roll multiple times on a table. And the recursive table script allows you to do that. So if I look at this syntax right here, 3T treasure, you'll notice the thing that's different here is up to this point, we've just been saying 1T. Well, that's because the standard rollable table syntax only allows you to roll on a table once. It doesn't matter what you put for the number here, it's only going to roll one time. So if I say 3T treasure, you see it only rolls one time. But if I make this a recursive table command, now we see 
that it actually rolled three times and we got our coins, our paintings, and our coins again in this example. And this is great, but this is a very plain output, right? Let's make this a little prettier to look at. So I'm just gonna swing my notepad window over here. And so what we're gonna do is wrap the output of the command in a template. And in this example here, I'm just using the default template that Roll20 provides for all its character sheets. But there are, of course, other templates available. Just check whatever character sheet that you're using in your particular system. But essentially what's gonna happen now is we'll take this command, I'm just gonna copy this whole thing, paste it in here, run it, and there we go. Now we get our treasure output that says you found Pearl of Power, another Pearl of Power and 28 gold coins, just the way that rolled out. Awesome, now it's formatted a little more elegantly, but let's take this a step further. This is a little tricky to read because we've got this comma separated list. What I wanna do now is have each item appearing on its own line in the template. So here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna add in this parameter right here delimiter br at the beginning of our command. So rt delimiter br, and what that's gonna do is put a line break between each item that appears. So let's copy this, we'll paste it in, run it, and there we go. Now we get this nicely formatted list of items that have appeared. Now, depending on your style, you may not want to reveal this treasure to the players. If something got generated and it's grotesquely low or insanely overpowered, you may not want to show this to them. So what we can do is we can actually have this whispered to the GM, just add that parameter right in there saying slash WGM, and now this whole thing is gonna get whispered to the GM when it runs. So let's see how that works as well. And there you go, you see now it's coming in from the GM and all your players don't see it. Now, in addition to the script's documentation, there's also a Roll20 forum where you can post questions about how to use recursive tables, and I'll include a link to that down in the description below. So there you have it. That's how you can use the Recursive Tables API script. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.